Winter Presents A Collapse of Horses by Brian Everson. I was certainly nobody in my family survived. I was certainly burned. Their faces blackened and bubbled. Just as my, did my own. But in their case they did not recover but perished. They are not one of them. You cannot be. For if you were, you would be dead. Why? You choose to pretend to be what you hope to gain from it. This is what interests me. Now it's your turn to listen to me, to listen to my proofs. Though I know you will not be convinced, imagine this, walking through the countryside one day, you come across a paddock, lying there on their sides in the dust, and actually still with four horses, all four grown, with no horses standing. They do not breathe, they do not and. Do not, as far as you can see, move. They are, all appearances, dead. Yet on the edge of the paddock, not twenty yards distant, man fills a trough with water. Are the horses alive and appearances deceptive? Has man simply not yet turned to see the horses dead? Or has he been shaken by what he has seen, doesn't know what to do but proceed, as if nothing has happened? If he turn and walk away, hurry, walk hurry on, Leaving before everything decisive happens, what do the horses become to you? I mean, both alive and dead, which makes them not quite alive, not quite dead. And what in turn, carrying their paradoxical knowledge in your head, does that make you? I don't think of myself special, as anything but ordinary. I completed a degree in a third tier university, housed in a town where I grew up, graduated safely, escorted in the middle of my class. I found plausible employment in the same town. I met a woman and married her, had children with her, three or perhaps four. This is some disagreement on that score. And then the two of us fell gradually and gently out of love. There came an incident at work, an accident, a so-called freak one. It left me with a broken skull for a short time a certain amount of confusion. I woke in a familiar place to find myself struck down. It seemed to me... I admit this too. It seemed for some time, hours at least, perhaps even days, I was not in a hospital at all, but in a mental facility. But my faithful and ever present slowly no. smothered me with different understanding. My circumstances, no. my limbs, he insisted, were strained, simply because they had been delirious. Now that no, no longer was the well, no. traps could be no loosened. Not quite yet, but soon. There's, no. there's nothing to worry about. No. I just had to calm down. Soon everything had returned to normal. No. Some ways, I suppose, so everything did, or at least tried to. After the accident, we received some minor compensation no. from my employer. I sent out to a pasture. Such as was the situation myself, my wife, my no. children. Again, in the hot and sweltering summer, crammed the house together and nowhere to go. I could awaken each day to find the house different from how it had been the day before. A door was in the wrong place. A window stretched a few inches longer than it would have been when I'd gone to bed the night before. The light switch, I was certain, had fallen half an inch to the right. After just a small thing, almost nothing at all. Just enough for me to notice. In the beginning, I tried to point these Put changes out to my wife. She seemed puzzled at first, then became somewhat evasive. Her response for time, part of me believes her responsibility. Perhaps she had learned some definite technique of quick changing and modifying the house. But after part of me felt certain, or nearly so, that was that this was impossible. As the time went on, my wife's evasiveness took a certain weariness, even fear. This convinced me that only she was not changing the house. But daily her mind simply adjusted to the change world. I don't dub it the same. She literally could not see the difference as I saw. Just as she could not see to something we had had three tunes, sometimes four. No, she could only see three. Or perhaps four. I'll be honest, I don't remember how many she saw. But the point was, as long as we were in the house, there's something sometimes three children, sometimes four. That was due to the increases of the house as well. I don't know how many children there would be. Until I went to room for room. Sometimes the room at the end of the hall was narrow, and one bed in it, and other times it had grown large at night and had two. 
I can count the number of beds each morning when I woke up. And perhaps it would be three, five times four. From there I would separate how many children I had, and found this more reliable method than trying to count children themselves. I would never know how much of father I was until I counted beds. I would not discuss with this with my wife when I tried to lay out my proofs to her. She was thought I was joking. Quickly, however, she decided that it was an indication of a terrible mental state, insisted I seek treatment. Which, under duress, I did. To a little avail, the only thing the treatment convinced me that there were certain things you shouldn't say, e- even to one's spouse. Things that you are not ready, or they are just not ready, maybe n- never be ready to hear. My child was not ready for it either. A few times I tried to fulfil my duties as a father, and sit d- down to tell him the sobering truth, and sometimes one of them didn't exist, unless there was something, times. Unless it was sometimes one of them existed twice, I got nowhere. Or unless than nowhere, or less than nowhere, confusion, tears, panic. I was only reported back to my wife. More threats of treatment. Well, then the truth of the situation. Was I the only one who could see the house changing? Was the, the, my obligation to my family in terms of helping them see and uh, them see and understand? How was I to help them if they not deny to be helped? Being a sense of man, a part of me wouldn't help. I wonder if I was respected, experienced any relation to morality at all. Perhaps there's something wrong with me. Perhaps I try to believe the accident that betrayed me. I did not try my level best or nearly to see things their way. I tried to not alert reality to each morning. A way the house is not exactly the house it had been the night before. Or if someone had moved us to a similar but quite identical house as we slept. Perhaps they had. I tried to believe that there were three or four four children. When they what then what did that did not work? I had three four, not three children. And when they didn't that didn't work, there was no corrosion correlation between children and beds. To blind them eye to that room at the end of the hall and keep it kept. Spanning out and collapsing like a lung. But nothing seemed to work, I could not believe. Perhaps we move, if we move things, would be diff- different. Perhaps the house is in some manner of li- about alive, or maybe, or haunted, maybe, or just wrong. But it, when I raised the idea of moving with my wife, he coughed out a strange, barking laugh, for emulating all the reasons this was a bad idea. With no money, a little prospect for any coming in. Now I had my accident and lost my job. We bought the house recently enough that. W- would take a substantial loss if we sold it. Quite set me we could not afford to move. Besides, what was wrong with the house? Perfectly good house. How could I argue with this? How from a perception, of course. She was right. There was no reason to leave. Well, there was nothing wrong with the house. How could there be? Houses couldn't change their, uh, on their own, she told me indignantly. This is not something that that reason would, could allow. But for me, that is exactly the problem. The house, for reasons I don't understand, wasn't acting like a house. I spent days thinking, bundling over what, what to do. I got away from the house. I wandered around alone in the countryside. But I walked long enough. I returned home. It was specifically exhausted of go to sleep, rather, rather than spending much of the night to watch. Trying to capture the moment when parts of the house changed for a long time. I thought that might be enough. That I, if I spent a little time in the house, it was possible. I returned only when exhausted. I would bring myself not to think about how unsound the house was. I would wake up distinctly hazy to no longer care what was where and how a different, different form before. That might have gone on for a long time, even forever for all equipment. But then in my walks I stumbled upon, perhaps was led to, something. It was a paddock. I saw horses lying in the dirt, seemingly dead. They couldn't be dead, could they? I could see, if, if I could tell, if they were breathing, I found I could not. I cannot say honestly if they were dead or alive. I still cannot say, I noticed a, say, I noticed a man on the far side of the paddock, feel, feeling a trough of water, facing away from them, and wondered if he had seen the horses behind him. If not, then he turned, maybe he would be that settled as I. When he, we approached them and determined they were dead, or he approached satisfaction in life. Or he 
seen him dead already and had his mind already able to take it in. For a moment I waited, but in a moment, a time in a moment, but then seemed something more terrible to me. But no idea knowing that sudden the horses were dead, because they were about not knowing whether they were dead or alive. So I hastily left, not realizing that to escape a moment of potential discomfort, I leaving him forever in my head as not quite dead, but in some sense clearly alive. Then to leave as I had to assume the place of a man beside a trough, but without ever being able to turn and learn the truth. In the days that followed, the image haunted me. I turned it over, scrutinized it, peered at every facet of it, trying to see if there's something I had missed, if there's a clue that would swaying me towards. But even the horses were alive or believing they were dead. It was a, if there were a clue to reveal to me that the man beside the trough knew more than that, that I believed to learn to avail. I probably remained in celebrity balance. If I went back, I couldn't help asking myself, would everything have changed? Could would the horses still, even now, be lying there? Even if were they had begun to carry the winter away, they would prove them dead. Or could they be exactly as I'd seen them, including the man still filming, filling the trough? What a terrifying fault. Since I stumbled upon the clatter, I don't know exactly what where it was. Everything, every walk I went on and every step I took, my house, every stumbling went into it again. I've been walking slower, stopping frequently, scrutinizing my surroundings, flying away from an area that remotely, might remotely harbour paddock. But after a while I deemed then that insufficiently safe I found myself hardly able to leave the house and yet there was the house always changing I couldn't remain here neither there was a gradually realised a simple choice either I could spell myself and return and comfort the houses or I should have to confront the house either house or home either house or holes what sort of choice was that really the words are pretty totally different Pronounce more or less the same, with one letter only having absolutely dialed up too high or too low in the alphabet. No, I could fill it, it by going out to avoid the house and filling five horses. I had, in the manner of speaking, simply found again the house. It was a must. It was prone. Horses were, were there for me to teach a lesson to me. They was meant to tell me something. But then the real name, near name set, the house. Devastation seen the collapse of the horses gnawed at me. It was telling me something, something I wasn't sure I would wanted to hear. The first part of me realised the idea, resisted the idea. No, I don't myself. Too extreme a step. Lives at stake. Lives of my wife and three, at least three children. Risks are t- too great. Then I thought, what was I to do? In my mind, I felt, kept seeing the clapped horses. I felt my thoughts again churned to, over their state. They lived, or they were they alive, or were they dead? I kept imagining myself there at the trough, paralysed. I would turn and look, it see, came to see, to me, my potential condition, perpetual condition. In one of my worst moments, it seemed to state not only to me, the whole world, from all of us, the verge of turning around and finding the dead behind us. And there, from there, I stepped back to the house, which, like the horses, seemed in a state of a splendid state. I knew it was changing, and something strange was happening. I was sure, at least, but I don't know what, how or what the changes meant. I don't, I can't make myself else. Anyone else see them? When it came to the house, I tried to convince myself. I could see what others could not. But the rest of the world was like the filling, the man filling the horse trough. And he would see the fallen horses. Thinking this naturally led me away from the idea of the house and back inside it to the horses. What should I, what should I, what should have done? I just told myself, to have thrown a rock, I should have stooped and scraped the dirt under my fingers, clothes, or a stone, and then sh- tried it. And one of the horses, waiting for them, for the meaty thud of dead flesh or, the, or shudder, an annoyed twitcher of a rat, rat straight, where, 
living holes. Not only is something you will spend it yourself in the briefest moment, not even if you have to face, to face it, horrible, inexplicable, dead herd of horses, even an inexplicable dead family, it must be faced. So I went away, so I turned myself in the house and went back to look for the paddock, seeing myself for a moment, whatever I would find. I was ready to rock in hand. I'd find out the truth about the horses. I would accept it, no matter what it was. Or at least I would have. But no matter how I, hard I looked, no matter how lo- long I walked, I could not find the paddock. I walked for miles, days even. I took every road, known and unknown, but it simply wasn't there. Was something wrong with me? Had a paddock existed at all? I wondered, was it simply something in my mind invented to cope with a problem in the whole house? House horse, house horse. Almost the same word, for all intents and purposes in this case. It was the same word. I should still throw a rock. To speak, I told myself, I would throw that so-called rock, not a horse. Not a horse, but a house. I still hesitate, thinking, planning. Night on night, I still I am regularly cold as smoke, raving around me, then the rising as fire, flames. In my head, I watch myself waiting patiently, calmly, till the flames are just the right height. I begin to call out for my family, awakening, call, urging them to leave the house. My head is unfurled sheets for the windows and shimmied nimbly to, to safely. He reached safely each time. I saw it escape so many times my head rendered it just the same way. I realised it take the smallest effort on my part to jostle it, it out of the realm of imagination into the real world. Then the house was good, had been gone and it could do me no damage. Both myself and my family would be safe. I had enough unpleasant interaction that those who desired to give me treatment since my accident. However, I knew to take steps to protect myself. I would have to make the fire look like an accident. For this purpose, I took up smoking. I planned carefully to smoke for a few weeks, just long enough to kick that curse to my wife and children to the idea. I didn't care for it, but it did not try to stop me since my accident. been shy me and really tried to stop me from doing anything. See me to his conclusion on my work concession to my wife. I really not to smoke in a bedroom. I promise to smoke only outside the house. Reviso That if it was too cold to smoke outside I might go do that go do, do so downstairs. The open window. During the third of Hatch's fourth week after I took up smoking with my wife and children asleep, it was indeed too cold. At least I judged I'd argue it would have been such if confronted after the fact. So I crept up over the window up near the couch and opened the images in my mind of wood. I told myself to allow my arm to droop, the tip of my cigarette to nudge against the fabric of the couch. Then I would allow the first fire of the couch, then the drapes would begin to smoke and catch fire. I would wait until the moment when my fancy, in, in my fancies, I was standing calling to my wife and children. I would just, I'd do just that, and it would be, it would be as if I just envisaged. Soon my family and I would be safe, the house would be destroyed. Once that was done, I thought perhaps I would find the paddock again, as well with the horses standing this time, and clearly alive. And yet the fabric of the couch did not catch fire, it said smoke, only slivering and sinking. I often pressed. I soon pressed a cigarette in it too deeply, and it dried. I found I lit another. Then the result was the same. I grew, gave up on both the couch and the cigarette. I turned inside the matches and used them to light the drapes. Turned out they burned much better. Going all around, all at once, and lighting my hair and clothing along with them. By the time I failed about enough to extinguish the body, the whole room was the flame. Still, I could feel them. Too much pain. I tried to call my wife and children, but I took a breath or two to do so. My lungs filled with smoke. I'm choking. I collapse. I don't know how I lived for the fire. Perhaps my wife dragged me out and went back to the children. I perished uh, only then. When I woke, I was here and sure that how I arrived. My face and body were barely burnt. A pain was excruciating. I asked about my family, but the nurse dodged the questions trust me, and only told me that I had to... I would sleep. This is how I knew my family was dead. They had been lost in the fire, and the nurse didn't know how to tell me. 
They had my, co- they, my only consolation was that a house too, a source of all the problems, was built to ground. But all the time I was kept alone, drugged. How long I cannot say, perhaps days, perhaps weeks. Long enough in any case for my burns to slough and heal. Those skin grafts I must surely have needed to take effect. My hair to grow fully back. The doctors must have worked very hard on me. For I admit that it's set for to. Most of it was tickler size. I looked exactly as I had before the fire. So, you see, I have the truth straight in my mind, and not be easy to change. There's no point in you coming to me with these stories, no point pretending once again. Uh, my house remains standing, I never, never touched by fame. There's no point coming to here pretending to be my wife. Tell me there was no fire. You found me lying in the room, in the middle of the living room, with my eyes gazing into the air. Seemingly unharmed. No, I accept that I'm a victim of tragedy. One of my own design. I know that my family's gone. Though I do not understand why you would want to convince me that you are my wife. What you hope to gain. Eventually, uh, I will. You will, you will let something slip and the game will be over. At worst, you're deliberately trying to deceive me. To, uh, to gain something from me. But what? As best someone... I decided that this might loosen the blow if I were made, made to believe my family is not dead, or even just mostly dead, and not quite alive. I might be convinced not to surrender or despair. Trust me, whatever you wish me good or ill, I do not hope you succeed. Like to be convinced, I clearly would. Trust me, whether you, you wish me good or ill, I hope you, sus- hope you do you hope you see. Try to convince I truly would. I, love, I would love to open my eyes and suddenly see my family surrounding safe. Go back a bit. At worst, you were deliberately to try to see me to gain something from me. But what? At best, someone has decided it's my lesson to blow that made to believe my family's not dead. Even mostly dead, I'm not quite alive. I must be convinced not to surrender to despair. Trust me, whenever you wish me no good or ill, I hope you succeed. I would like to be convinced, I truly would. I'd love to open my eyes and suddenly see family surround me, safe and sound. I would tolerate the fact the house is still standing, the unfinished business remains behind itself, and that wherever horses still lie, collapse, and waiting to be either alive or dead. There will be will, or in the some senses, remain, like the man at the trough with, with our backs turned. I understand I might have to gain from it, but you, I do not understand. Do you know, do your worst, disrupt my sanity, try to fool me, make me believe, get me to believe there is nothing dead about behind me. If you can make that happen, I think we can both agree that anything is possible.